Good evening, all. I'm Rapstein with your Spider ETF wrap-up, and this wrap-up is for the evening of Monday, the 26th of September, 2022. Wow. Nothing changes. The markets keep dropping. I was reading reports today that there's some $4.8 trillion now in money market funds waiting to be deployed in the market. The problem with that of waiting to deploy it is when, where, how do you know? That becomes the problem. I looked today and it was funny because I, I saw one of the analysts coming out as I was looking at things and, and seeing the different stocks that get re-rated each day and as to where they're at. And all of a sudden, Planet Fitness. So I decided to bring it on to show some of this craziness, in my opinion, that goes on as people do this, and they just pick a number, in my opinion. Now, they may have fundamentals that I don't know. I'm a chartist. In looking at the chart, I don't see the logic of what went on. When we take a look at other markets, though, Amazon was up. They're going to do another Prime Day. So get ready. Early October, you're going to have your second one. That's never happened. But what's this a race about? Getting your money. That's exactly what it is. Because they expect a weak holiday season. So if they get it now, before there's all the competition for that money, you get a deal. They get more sales. That's probably the logic of it. Apple up today about 30 cents, but other markets just all over. Twitter should get interesting as uh, Elon Musk has to now do a deposition with uh, the Twitter attorneys, and uh, that can be hair-raising to say the least. That if, you, if you've seen any of how the others went, it's interesting. You can see all the stock indices got hurt. Now, I want to point something out before we go anywhere. This is our website. And if you come over here to market research at iraepstein.com, you will see that I put up over the weekend a special report on stock indices. I think you're going to want to take a look at that to give you an idea of what I'm saying. And simply put, we are in a zone for a bounce. I don't know the day it'll come. I wish I could tell you that. But I'll show you why, what I think. And understand on this bounce, it's a bounce. I am not looking yet for a trend change. I happen to think we will get, at the end of November, right after the FOMC meeting, a Santa Claus rally, regardless of what other people say. And the reason is we'll be beaten down so much that you go with the traditional, I'm not going to do any more selling, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. It's known the Fed is going to have to raise interest rates. And the other thing that is known in all these markets is what the Fed has done has created a situation where the dollar is so super strong that inflation on its own is coming down via that. What do I mean? Well, any good you want to buy if you're an importer abroad, <clears throat> if you can buy it outside of America, just the currency difference is huge. You saw today the British pound got down under the 104 area, historic lows. You're trading in the 90s, high 90s in the euro currency. Same thing. So what does that do? Well, oil is priced in dollars. So what it's done is it's made oil more expensive in dollar terms to those people, driving that price down as well. Everything gets its chance to bounce. As we get into the wintertime, energy demand will pick up. As the U.S. stops putting out the strategic reserve oil, that'll take markets off there. The P.E. ratios, they're all under attack. Yes, we have certain companies that are resisting it, like an Apple. But in the end, what happens is the weight of the whole market still carries the markets down. And that's what we've got to pay attention to. So as I said, I wanted to look at Planet Fitness, and I started laughing when I opened the chart. So they either see something when they made this analysis from the fundamentals, but as a chartist, I don't see anything right there. I see a market that's been in a prolonged downtrend. It peaked out again in August and then just started cutting through everything. It's under all the key moving averages. Yes, you're under the Bollinger Band, so today you move to the right-hand side. That I understand completely. But you're developing a bearish embedded reading. Now, I would think that if people, if unemployment picks up as S&P Global is predicting it will, that it'll hit near 4.8% next year and over 5% in 2024, if that is true, 
one of the things people do give up going to the gyms and other things is they've got to figure out what they're doing. It might not be the right thing to do, but it's one of them. But I look at the market and I see, okay, it gave a bounce and that's about all that I could say. If it stays embedded, I'll be telling traders to go short the market on rallies. Netflix. So Netflix might be one of the candidates that if you start taking out right here, the 221.43 area, I'd be very careful. I think it would then make a run for the lower Bollinger Band. So this is a market that's caught between the Bollinger Band high and low. There's nothing unique here. It's just bouncing back and forth, not breaking out one way or the other. Apple today tried to bounce off the lower Bollinger Band that it had hit on Friday, did so ran into what had been ideally support. The 100-day uh, average became a resistance point today. So we've got to wait and see what that's going to do. In Disney, the market is still coming down. A lot of, uh, again, the same report I was reading was talking about Disney and how, how their Disney Plus is helping things. The market's not buying that at this point. But here's what I do see. When I look at a market, I can see one, two, Three, four days in a row under the Bollinger Band, now nah, you're ready to bounce regardless. So this is a market, rarely do you get beyond five, so we'll see if it does that. In XLF, three days in a row under the Bollinger Band, oversold, I can see the market giving a bounce. So maybe, maybe we're looking at a Monday break with a Tuesday reversal to the upside, just based on the chart action. It has nothing to do with me picking a bottom or anything else. I see the same thing here. You've got, uh, let's see, today you were under the band, you were under the band on Friday, and you were under the band on Thursday. So you have three days in a row under the band. I look at this, you've got your embedded reading. I think that if you get a good rally, the pros wanna sell these markets short. So if you get a rally tomorrow, I would be surprised that we don't get short selling into it, but you might wanna give it a little bit to get a chance for a leg. Remember, markets that break this much, they're like rubber bands. When they come back, they come back hard sometimes, short-lived, but hard at times. You're at the lower Bollinger Band and the semiconductor, I'd let somebody else wanna own that. And the home builders. We're gonna get some new home sales numbers tomorrow. We'll see what they're doing. And remember, the developers, the sellers, they all know the game now. The game now is refi. What do I mean by that? You go in, you get a mortgage, you make certain you get them from the firms that'll work with you the more that you do your refinance. So you go in there, you're not paying points and so on again. You'll pay, if you pay anything, a small fee. They'll dig it out from what they had 15 years ago. This is how it worked. It'll come right back at you. And people at a certain number as mortgages eventually drop. Now, when I say that, understand the four that today, the 10-year note got up to 392. So it had been very quiet at the 3.5%. It is very quickly added 40 basis points, and it narrowed in the two 10-year spread, which means mortgages, which are based often on the 10-year, they will move up because of this move. You watch, you'll, you'll see that I'm uh, probably on the right path there. In the energy sector, I think you're getting a little too cheap here. Now on the way up, what had been looking to be support didn't turn out to be support at all. So will it be resistance on a move back to the 200 day average? There's nothing friendly here just yet. The gold market, how can gold fight anything right now? The Ukraine war hasn't changed. Inflation, uh, if anything, it got worse, I think you'd agree. But some of the reports that I'm looking at, S&P Global again, they're quoted in my nightly review tonight. I wrote, I wrote what they had put out and gave them all the credit. It's their report, not mine. They think that inflation, the peak of it is over. It has passed. And if you look at the break in stocks and commodities, you see that there's tremendous selling pressure on everything. Now. When they measure these numbers, how they measure them, I don't know. But as a trader for five decades, I can tell you, when I watch a commodity market in, in a whole, there isn't one element of it holding up. That is a sign that the raw goods have come down. Now what we have to see is what happens with everything else around it, the sticky stuff. You know that I've talked about that uh, to you over and over. You're not taking labor down, but you might not hire as many people. 
rent, new rent contracts that are coming up are lower in many, many parts of the country. So as that happens, you go in, but rent is sticky. If you sign the two-year lease, you're not getting out of that two-year lease. Get what I'm saying? I hope you do because it's important. Now we'll see if other goods come out. We're going to see like uh, di different streaming services will be releasing suit and supportive services. Will, will people move out of their regular full pay into those to lower their bills somewhat? That'll be interesting to see too. When we come to GDX, the miners, no, I'd never tell you to sell under a Bollinger Band. Am I bullish? Not in your wildest dream, but there's nothing here to get super bearish about. Dr. Copper, until copper bottoms out, which it's not doing, it's breaking out to the downside, be careful here. I'm watching this market. You could be going back down easily to the $25 area in this market. Yes, it's oversold. Yes, it's under the lower Bollinger Band, but... We just had two days in a row. Today, you're in the bottom quadrant. And on Friday, both settled outside of the Bollinger Band. The most recent high was up here. So until that area near 32 is taken out, what is this market screaming? In my opinion, what it is telling you is, hey, I am bearish. Things are bad in the world, and they're probably getting worse. TLT, each time we get under the Bollinger Band, we do get a bounce. Keep your eye on that. UUP, the dollar index, all right. You're now stretched out. You certainly closed with breakout type numbers. So until this low is taken out, the most recent low in the market, that's saying that, hey, on hard breaks, the market is still saying it wants to move higher on a relative basis. And the flip-flop is true in FXE. You can see how it just is now four days in a row underneath the lower band. You rarely go beyond five. I'm looking for a feeble rally to get to the right-hand side in that market. So when I put it all together in interesting time, you see the story that I put together for you in my, again, in this uh, stock index report. It's only up, by the way, for three days. It comes off Wednesday. That's all that these reports are good for. They're timely as can be. They're meant to show you what I'm seeing, the reasons, if they materialize, fine. And I want to repeat. I am looking for the markets to find a way to give you a bounce here, but I am not a buyer for the bounce. I ultimately want to be a seller. You'll see why. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day.